All right, what's up, guys? We are back here on the Game of Inches podcast, episode nine. Uh, Mayflower Sports. He is Jake. I'm Andrew. And the Super Bowl has come and gone. And uh, Jake and I, well, I think we owe the followers something, man. Yeah, I guess we're giving away two jerseys. Uh, how fun. <laughs> you love you love to see it. No, no, definitely. We enjoyed doing it. the pod, but. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wasn't really thinking. We definitely could have got away with one jersey, but, you know, I was trying to be cool. I was like, fuck it, I'll throw in a jersey too. And here we are, two jerseys that we're going to have to give away. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So uh, obviously, the, the the big topic of conversation is going to be following up the uh, Super Bowl. The Buccaneers get it done over the Chiefs. And I don't know if I should say easy fashion, but it is easy fashion. I mean, the Chiefs got dominated 31 to 9. Uh, we'll touch on that a little bit later on in the podcast. We got a few other things to get through uh, beforehand, but uh, we will be doing a giveaway. Uh, Mayflower Sports will be doing a Tom Brady Buccaneers giveaway. Uh, I'm sure a lot of uh, Patriots fans turned Buccaneers fans <laughs> will probably be interested in the jersey as well. Uh, but looking forward to the podcast, man. How you been doing, Jake? Good, man. It was a crazy week in sports. We, uh, we're not going to touch on the UFC this uh, episode, but there were some crazy knockouts in the UFC. Corey mm-hmm. Sandhagen absolutely put Frankie Edgar to sleep. Pretty sad to see absolute legend of the sport. And then we had the football on Sunday. And for uh, those listening in Nova Scotia, they know that we had an absolute shit storm of a snowstorm yesterday. I don't know what it ended up finishing, but they were saying anywhere between like 20 and 50 centimeters. Took me like, I think like an hour to get home waiting for a cab. I was considering walking. The boys were telling me I was going to die. So <laughs> it, it was a good weekend, man. Good weekend for sports. I'm excited to get into the pod. We got a lot of uh definitely a lot to cover in this uh episode uh kind of upset with troy brower to be honest i know we're gonna dive into that but i just want to get off the top with that he he said he was gonna sign a one-year deal and he didn't he's a liar yeah trevor bauer he pretty much said like he was gonna be so particular he wanted to go to you know, a team like the Mets or, or kind of grow with a franchise. And I don't know if we can call it a sellout, man, but here he is. You know, the rich get richer. There's no other phrase to use here. Trevor Bauer signs a three-year deal worth $102 million. He signs with the defending champions. Like, how does that even make any sense? It's, it's a weird one, man, especially, like, knowing him because, like, he kind of seems like a guy that's a little bit, like, edgy and, like, against the envelope, against the green. Like, he'd rather kind of carve his own path in MLB history, but you can't really blame him. Like, like we're turning into, like, every sport almost is really ring chasing now, so I'm not too surprised. Uh, I did see, though, I that he does have an opt-out after the first year, so he could go through that, but the guy deserved to cash in. He's coming off a of Cy Young. He's been... I think underrated as a pitcher in the MLB for a little bit. I know like he had a pretty decent start to his career and then he kind of tapered away for a little bit. And then now he's kind of back on, but I was hoping the Jays were actually going to land him. But seeing that he signed a three year, $102 million contract, I definitely (laughs) don't think we were in on that at all, man. I'm just like disappointed with like all the, like the hype surrounding it. There was so much like hyperbole. Like he actually wanted to have a, uh like a press conference like lebron james had with the decision did you hear about that yeah i was yeah uh, that's so dumb man then he goes to the dodgers yeah it's well i guess <laughs> it's kind of fitting you know lebron went to the heat with you know yeah. two all-stars so it would have been kind of fitting but uh there was an mlb reporter i forget his last name but i know they call him jed he uh he had a really good piece about um bauer and his best friend actually had a deal that if Bauer didn't sign his first year in free agency. If he didn't sign a one year deal, his best friend got to throw a baseball as hard as he could at his nuts from five feet away. So I think that's where the opt out came into play. He's like, ah, if I win a title, I might just opt out and, you know, save my nutsack. But <laughs> yeah, Bauer, why would he make that deal? I don't know. He said Bauer's talked about, I guess, multiple times. I haven't really heard anything but i kind of went back and dug into it a little bit there was a couple interviews where he's actually said like he thinks it would be awesome to play like a bunch of one-year contracts and just bet on himself every year and he can decide his situation every single year and if he doesn't like the way the organizations run or the direction they're heading or you know just anything he can at the end of the year say you know what i didn't really like it here i'm going to go somewhere else but for me i just 
this is like there's a pro, like I don't really like salary caps because I feel like you should be able to spend the money if you have it. But baseball is an instance where like the Dodgers can just spend so much more than everybody else that like every year until they kind of run out of money, they're going to be contenders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. That, that, that's really the problem is that. Well, I mean, it's just like Moneyball. We've all seen that movie. We've all heard the story, at least, about it. There's a reason why some of these teams are consistently up there. It's 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 that, and it's the market, right? Yeah. There's a reason why All-Stars, you know, continuously want to leave the Columbus Blue Jackets in the NHL. It's Columbus, first of all, but it's the Blue Jackets. They're not really a famous hockey team, for example. So, you know, that's why I found it was weird, though, because it bugged me a little bit, man, the fact that, like, we saw reports like on my phone like bauer to sign contract with the new york mets mets you know have inked it they, they've signed the deal and everything like that and they've it had so many different talks with so many different teams and then the dodgers names come up obviously you can tell like and i know i'm I'm obviously the contrarian like you said these days like people they, they are ring chasing but they also want to go where uh, they're 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 building up, and I'm not saying that anyone that's an athlete should have to go to a crappy team and build with them. I'm not saying that at all. But to kind of like, for lack of better words, to to just fuck with these fan bases, and then all of a sudden go to the team that's the defending champions, that doesn't really you know sit right with me. But like you said, he got paid, he got 102 milli, and he got the opt out. I can't really blame him. He's unbelievable, though, man. Like, I've watched, like, some uh, training videos of Trevor Bauer. It's insane. And like you said, he's kind of a weird dude. Like, he's not really, like, your typical, like, pitcher. Go- I mean, pitchers are kind of like hockey goalies. Or they're kind of, you know what I mean? They just, like, yeah. they're a species of their of their own. Um, but, you know, he's really active on Twitter. He He loves to stir the pot. He loves to talk shit to the batters. He's fun to watch. So it'll be interesting to see. But it's like you said, like, I'm curious to see him more in like a spotlight place now, you know, yeah. like he's and, and how about the, that, like the pitching staff now, the starters yeah, for this Dodgers team. It's nasty. They, they, don't, they don't even have a an ace. They have they have multiple aces. It's going to be unfair, bro. The fact like David Price is probably going to be four or five or even maybe six. Yeah. Like yeah. that's absurd, man. Like and the thing you said, like going to the spotlight, like he is going to the spotlight. But like also you just touched on there's so many other great pitchers there that like I feel like that's going to be kind of like a good competition for him because he's he was with the Reds for a while and they didn't really do much and then now he's going to a situation where he can actually like be like you know I'm I'm going to out pitch Clayton Kershaw this year like on his team I'm going to show them that like this is why I got the hundred and two million this is why going into next year if I want to be here I'm going to be the ace they're gonna they're gonna see and I really like that with the competition I find sometimes a lot of people underestimate competition like they always think it's a negative thing but i think if in the right situation with the right people competition is a great thing and i think the dodgers it's going to be hard for them to not repeat i know there's there's some other teams out there like the yankees are always going to be good the blue jays look like they're coming up the astros are kind of probably still be hanging around even though they lost springer so there's going to be some good teams and uh the NL, I just don't, uh, the NL, like the Cardinals kind of improved. They got Aaron Otto for like literally nothing. So it's going to be interesting this year, but I can't see how the Dodgers aren't at least back in the final somewhere. What's crazy is like the power they have throughout their entire entire lineup, right? Like oh, they, yeah. they don't even just have like, you know, uh, one through four that can, you know, be clutch hitters. That's what's crazy is so like now they're not really going to be just involved in higher scoring games or not like they were before, but now it's pretty much going to be get to four or five, you know, let your starters do the work and get that bullpen in there. And, you know, that uh, that number that they have to reach for runs per game now is going to get a little bit lower uh, the stronger that their pitching staff gets. I mean, it's going I, – I believe we might see uh, some lower scoring games. And I'm not saying that the pitchers dictate the offense, but your, your, your grip on the bat is a little bit less tight. It's a little bit looser now. I mean, you have a stacked bullpen behind – on you every single night i mean let's face it as blue jays guys uh like you're a jays fan right I, yeah i know you're yeah. a jays fan. like there's been nights where we've been like shit like this guy's going to the mound you know what i mean but some nights <laughs> oh, yeah. we're like yeah we've got okay we've got we got him out here you know what i mean and like that's the thing with this dodgers team is like if you're a batter and you're going out there like are you stressed like if you strike out you know 
you've got Trevor Bauer, you've got Kershaw, you've got Price, you've got Urias, you've got so many guys out there. Uh, they're going to be great. So I, you know, I think that we could see some, you know, some more wins from this Dodgers team where they don't have to score four or five runs this year. Yeah, definitely, man. I totally agree. And one thing that's underrated in baseball, like I played baseball all the way up until I was 18 or 19. One thing that's really underestimated in baseball that leads to championships is bullpen, like middle innings, bullpen and defense. Defense is one of like the most, I like people don't really like factor in defense. I feel like a lot into baseball, it's more of like a offensive driven league. So people are constantly like, I want to see the hits. I want to see the home runs, but if you get a team that plays really good defense and they have a really good bullpen, like you said, I think the Dodgers are going to have even more wins than they have had the last couple of years. They could realistically maybe, I think they could maybe win like 68% of their games, 70% of their games this year, man. Like they could, like they could be a really, really good team. I like can even push higher, like 75% of their games. Like they're going to be super hard to beat the depth yeah. all the way through from the first batter to number nine. And then from the first starting pitcher, whoever that is, Bauer, Kershaw, whoever they decide all the way to their closing pitcher. It's, it's going to be a fun year for the Dodgers fans. And I know our boy Will's just absolutely <laughs> chomping at the bit to get betting on the Dodgers. Cause they're going to be a hard out this year. Definitely. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. And that's the cool part about doing this podcast, <laughs> man, is that like, we're always going to have something to talk about, whether it's like in the professional sports or local or, uh, anything around really the East Coast, whatever sport it might be, there's always something to touch on. So, you know, during this time here with NBA and NHL still going on, we're going to touch on some offseason moves. But, you know, when the NBA championship is over, when the Stanley Cup uh, has been raised, we're getting into some of these summer sports. And I can't wait. We've got the uh, Euros coming up in the summer. It's going to be oh, awesome. Like the podcast, we're just getting started here on the Game of Inches podcast. Uh, let's get into Liverpool, man. Let's get into your guys. Let's Let's get it out of the way. Uh, the elephant in the room for anybody that knows you. I feel like I got to say, I'm proud that you wanted to mention it. You know, we're, we're talking earlier today, talking about what are we going to bring up on the podcast? You know, you, you didn't really want to shove it underneath the, under, uh, under the rug. No, man, it's a uh, uh, soccer, honestly, football, where whatever you want to call it, whatever part of the world you're from. This has probably been my favorite sport that I never played growing up like never played a single organized game of soccer in a league besides like junior high and a beer league that I joined <laughs> like this year actually so like I love soccer so for me like even though Liverpool lost and like I am going to go on a rant and I am going to get upset like just in, in terms of the game I think it's it's a very underappreciated game it's I think besides football it's the second most important team sport like in soccer like you know you you can get away with maybe having like one or two really good players carrying you to a win. But when you have 11 guys versus 11 guys, like the team really factors into the game and like how you move the ball, how you defend together, how you just everything, everything you do in soccer is like football. You move in a unit, you play in a unit, you make runs. Like it's, I just love it. So even though we lost, uh, I'm just excited that we're going to be able to get to talk about it. And you, you touched on the euros. The euros are going to be a really fun time. I can't wait to get into that. I was actually supposed to be over there. For yeah, the Euros, uh, before they got canceled during COVID, so that's a super big bummer. That uh, gonna be watching that on TV at home. But to get into Liverpool, like I just gotta ask you, like I don't want to, like you're a new soccer fan, so like what did you think? Because we we watched the game, we tag, we were texting about it. Like, what did you think about just like that game and just in general? I thought it was like the first half. Well, like parts of the game we were watching at the restaurant we were at together on your yeah. phone. <laughs> and then yeah, uh, you know, half, I always we both, watch it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Everywhere you go. But the second half, we were both like at home and stuff. And like, I guess I would say, and, and you'll agree with me, is that it was, uh, was definitely in reach, you know, for Liverpool. They were competing. And that's to me what, what would show the most sign of uh, worry, you know, for this team. And we saw their game earlier in the week where they got. You know, it, it was just it not even like, they just couldn't get anything established. Right. And their yeah. players look fatigued. And then they had their coaches complaining about the scheduling and all that stuff. And their excuses are coming out. Uh, they're taking bad fouls and stuff like that. So that's kind of the biggest thing I noticed, man, was the was the the fact that it was within reach and just one goal um, comes from Man City. And then the game just opens up completely. Uh, the defensive effort lacked late in the game and the finishing ability. I just, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. I mean, I don't know. Like the thing is people always say I have these outlandish soccer takes. So I've kind of settled down with them because I've learned to understand the game a lot more. And you and I have talked to you about how 
you know, the shooting more and stuff like that. But you talk about runs and, and playing as a unit from an outside perspective. I feel like Liverpool kind of gave up on making those runs and they started trying to go individual whenever they got it within the box area. And that's what yeah. kind of screwed them over, right? They stopped playing as a team. Yeah, man, we, uh, we're in shame. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with everything you said. I don't think uh, anything you said was wrong. We definitely gave up second half once. I wouldn't say we. Uh, I wouldn't say we necessarily gave up, but like after Allison gave the ball away twice and they scored, like the game's over. So like we did kind of give up, but our squad doesn't really give up like that. So like there was still some effort, but you're 100 percent right. We did give up. We didn't really look cohesive. The second half, it turned a lot more into like individuals trying to make plays. But I just like to get into more of like a like the philosophical side of the like of like what happened. Like I don't understand, and like this is just me gonna be ranting here for a minute. I don't expect you to like give me an answer back. But like we play the same every single game. So like you know, in any sport, if you play the same every single game, like somebody is gonna catch on to that eventually, and then there's gonna be a blueprint about how to play you, and then other teams are gonna start to copy that. So we always play a style of football where it's we're very cross heavy it's we're swinging balls into the box from outside the 18 we're trying to get a lot of balls into the box and when that doesn't work like our game just like falls apart so like to put it into like another sports perspective like if you just run iso all the time in basketball and like that's your only play and it just never works like what like you don't really know what else to do and I feel like we've gotten to a point with our team now. Like, I know we've had a lot of injuries, but, like, we got to start looking past the injuries. Like, the injuries happened, like, months ago. Like, our squad's a little thin. We have had, like, I think we probably have had the most injuries in the league this year, and I know we've we've definitely had the most impactful injuries this year. We've lost two, three center backs for the season, which is unheard of. And I just... I'm, I don't want to keep getting frustrated because I know there's a lot of injuries and I said we got to overlook that. I feel like we got to put more of a realistic expectation on what we expect from Liverpool this season. We're not going to win the title. Like, that's out of the way. City's 10 points clear with two games in hand or a game in hand. So, like, that's just over. Now it's just about making top four and trying to just establish something, man. Like, as a fan, watching every single week, like, I get super frustrated. And I know, like, I'm not, like, some, like, soccer kingpin where i'd be out there just fucking spraying passes and just hitting volleys <laughs> yeah. from like outside the box and just doing you're allowed crazy. to get frustrated man like you're it's a just fan like, <clears throat> like i know like you watching from like a betting perspective when we played brighton and we lost one nil you said why weren't we shooting like that was a valid point like we were getting into opportunities and just trying to like walk the ball into the net and it's getting like to a point now where like we're not seeing any progression anymore like i feel like we see the same team go out every single week and they're going to play to a certain point. And if anybody can maybe play above that just a little bit, you could probably get a result from us. And it's just, it's super frustrating after winning the title last year for the first time in the modern day Premier League history. And it's just like, I don't know, man. It's just a bummer this season. Like I was mm-hmm. saying, all my teams are just fucking letting me down besides Colorado. Like, the man, Colorado's not back. playing for a few days now. I know. It's just all going to shit for you. COVID, man. Like, it's just, I don't know what's going on with my sports teams this year. And from a betting perspective, I know you were you were saying a lot, too. Like, you were on the over in the Liverpool game and Manchester City. Like, City walked us off the park, man. Like, that could have been the best bet of the friggin' weekend. Like, that was as soon as they scored the first goal and you told me you had the over, I was like, ah, pff, that's hitting easy. Like it just, we have no defense. We can't score. We're just, we're just stuck in the mud as Conor McGregor would say. Like, we're just, just feels like we're just like our legs are just a million pounds and nothing's going our way. I feel like they get frustrated off turnovers. Like they'll, they'll be setting it up, passing the ball around a little bit, try and make a nice little cheeky pass. And then the second they turn it over, like I understand how soccer works. Like the strikers aren't expected to like sprint back and get that guy. Like somebody else's job is to step in. But like, I feel like, the frustration really sets in like after a couple chances that were supposed to, you know, be more dangerous or they could have scored off of it. It's not like they build momentum off those chances. They're almost like losing momentum. Yeah. It's like, it's like the opposite. It's like, shit, we should have scored. Like now I'm pissed off, you know, like Mo Salah, he has really bad, like, uh, expressions. Like he, his body language is horrible. Yeah. He does get frustrated a lot. 
Um, Mane gets frustrated a lot. I feel like that's just kind of like a top player, like syndrome thing where like, you know, like mm. little man syndrome where you're just like, <laughs> just kind of like comes out to you because you're just, you know, you think you're, well, he is one of the best in the league, but it's just, you're right, man. Like we were playing our biggest game of our season and, you know, things weren't necessarily going our way and you could just see that in like the performance. And I know like, like this doesn't really like, I, it's going to be hard for you to answer this. And this is more of just like a question to like any, like the soccer fans that they want to like reach out and maybe like tell me what they think or whatever. It's, so this is just my, like, I'm just going to like simplify it for you and you can just tell me what you think. So we played two mid, two of our best midfielders at center back because we don't have any center backs. So we just bought two center backs. Why are you playing two of our best players in one position out of position to compensate for the lack of something full well knowing that like, that's not like what they do. like. It's like putting like ought like I don't not like we'll say Austin Matthews on defense like you like he could do the job but like if he's playing somebody like really good like yeah he's probably going to suffer and he's probably not going to do the best. And so I what's just, the reason just cuz they're so skilled like in general they feel like they'd be good at any position. He's trying to compensate because they have like experience so like Henderson our captain played at center back Fabinho played at center back he's played at center back quite a bit but one thing in in soccer that I feel like maybe like I don't want to say casual people that don't watch the game or like sometimes it's easily over missed. Like the best thing for like a, a defense is to have a midfielder or two sitting in front of them that just collect everything. So they win tackles, they win second balls, like they move the ball well. Like they never get usually ran past. And like that's what Henderson and Fabinho offer for us. So like Klopp's worried about playing two maybe less experienced guys in their natural position because he's trying to account for experience but like we just got walked off the park like 4-1 we did that last game against Brighton we lost we did like it's just like I need to see some change man like it's so frustrating just mm -hmm. knowing like we just we just bought two center backs like who cares if we lose the game or we like you know what I mean like if you want to see it you want to see yeah, like, like, put yeah. the kid out there like you know, he hasn't like he's played, he's had a couple training sessions with the team. He hasn't played a game. It's it's a huge ass to put him in against City. But it's like we lost 4 1 anyways. Like, yeah. play the, like just let's just try it. Like, let's try and get out of this funk. Like, let's try and mm. do some different things, a different formation. Like, I know you you've watched the last two games. You've probably noticed that we play a 4 3 3, like always. There's always yeah. three attackers, there's always three midfielders. Like, let's try and switch up the formation. Like, let's play through the middle of, like, the field a little bit more. You probably noticed, too, watching us the last two weeks. Oh, yeah. We only play down the wings. And that's that's our whole game plan is to get down the wing or hit a long ball and just have somebody run onto it. And They tried that a lot against Man City early. They tried that the whole game, it felt like, man. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just, it's so frustrating being. That's what I was saying. Like, when it wasn't working, they are just pissed. They are like. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's like the Golden State Warrior or no the Rockets last year like only shooting threes and then when they had an off night shooting threes there was no other option yeah and this you know, is like, like it's been like a comparison. month of this now man and that's a good comparison man it's a great comparison because like you know the Rockets like basketball like they were consistent enough where like it wasn't huge stretches like we're going on almost like two months now of like poor performances and playing the exact same mm -hmm. and I know this has been like a, a crazy long rant and i've just been spewing and spewing and spewing but like it's, it's therapy just, man it's therapy <laughs> it's just it's weird like it's just weird when you could when you've seen us play so well last year and i know we've had a couple injuries and a couple of the boys aren't with us but like it's like the fall off is just so bad and just the way we've been playing it's like it's one thing to lose you know like you can you can handle certain losses but like i can't handle a 4-1 loss like that i like i saw on sunday man like that was a terrible performance. One of the worst performances I think I've seen us play. So what would you rather? 4-1 loss like that or like a loss in like extra time? Well, what kind of sports fan are you? Like not 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 penalty. I know, I, I'm just saying literally like extra like injury time. Like it's like 2-1. Uh, yeah, honestly, I wouldn't. I would probably. Because I'm I'd that kind of sports fan. That's the I'd kind of sports fan I am. I'd rather lose in dramatic fashion, I think, than get blown out. At least. You know, I want to feel like we're in it. Even like exactly. Even if we lose, like, uh, like I can remember thinking back to like the World Juniors, and I, it was the goal John Carlson scored in overtime. Like, for like 
a couple minutes I was like absolutely devastated, but I was like, at, like at the end of the day, I was like, that was probably one of the best games I ever watched. Yeah. So like, I, I agree with you. I'd rather the boys, you know, go out there and put in a good effort and put in a performance and lose in dramatic fashion on like the last kick of the game. than watching our fucking goalkeeper give the ball away three different <laughs> times and just fucking <laughs> watching three tap-ins from the goal line. Like, Oh my God. Well, I, before we talk Super Bowl. I'll say, speaking of teams and rants for us to go on, uh, and would you rather lose a game by margin or uh, close? Uh, or, you know, the Leafs and the Habs are meeting on Wednesday, so we won't have a podcast uh, until after that game is played. Obviously, I've made it pretty clear in Montreal fan. The last time they played, uh, Montreal had a hefty lead, and then there were back-to-back -back penalties given up by the Habs. Five on three happened for the Leafs. And then the game-winning goal was settled by the puck uh, trying to get cleared by Drew Ann, hitting a referee, and the Leafs getting it scoring. So, I do remember this. Uh, I so do remember this. It's typical of me bitching about a team losing, but at the same time, like that obviously feels better to me than seeing, you know, if they would have lost 5 2, right? So yeah. I just never really understood the fans that are like, oh, like, don't put me through that stress. It's like, why are you even a fan? Like, yeah. why are you even supporting that team if you would like only rather win or get blown up? I've never really understood that. Uh, we're going to come right back here on Game of Inches with uh, some Super Bowl talk and uh, getting ready to uh, talk about giving away a jersey here uh, in, in the in the future. Because, you know, two jerseys, we want to do a giveaway in general. We want to get ourselves out there, get our name out there. At least it's going to be from Tom Brady. Um, <laughs> it, it's funny because it. you and I were saying it like it was going to be such a, yeah, like if they pull it off, if, <laughs> if, they, if, they, if, they, if they can do it. Bro, last, last episode was nothing but freezing cold takes. What did I say? Ottawa was going to lose 15 games in a row and they yeah. won that night. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. I remember I was asking like how, and I, I said something, something similar. I was like, how many games can they go <laughs> in a row? And the funny thing is I should have actually known because the Habs, it was actually a really bad spot for the Habs. They just destroyed Vancouver like three straight games. And then the and then the senators got destroyed by the Oilers. Yeah, so it was like a pretty bad spot. But anyway, we'll come right back here with uh, some NFL talk. Last time we'll talk NFL for at least a few months. Right here on the Game of Inches podcast. The Full Circle Realty Team specializes in commercial, residential, and property management by taking a distinctive entrepreneurial approach to help clients and customers find their next investment. If you are looking to buy or sell real estate in 2021, contact the team today at info at fullcirclerealty.ca to learn more about buying and selling homes in 2021. All right. The Chiefs, absolute dud for them. They couldn't get anything going. 31 to 9 is the score. Uh, let's start with this. Tom Brady, we talked about it, the storyline. Uh, everybody was saying it, not just us. It was the goat versus the baby goat. Everyone loved to say it. Every podcast network, every TV station, they had that going. That was the promo. That was the headline. And I just want to say this. Before I get into Tom Brady, this game does not fall. This loss does not fall on Patrick Mahomes. There were so many plays where he was just running for his life. I don't have the exact numbers, but it, the dangerous pass rush stats were somewhere in the 20s for the Buccaneers on Patrick Mahomes. 29 and, pass rushes. Or, yeah, uh, pressure, sorry. Yeah, and it was like, what, six or seven? Uh, or, or maybe less than that uh, for Kansas City. I mean, Tom Brady, Eli said it the best, Jake. Tom Brady lived the dream for a quarterback in the Super Bowl. I mean, he was not touched. He was not pressured. He barely had to escape the pocket. He got sacked like maybe once or twice. I don't have the I don't know the exact numbers, but look, Mahomes is not the problem. Mahomes. I mean, we have to tip our caps to the defense of the Buccaneers. Tom Brady is Tom Brady. Gronkowski played well. Uh, Leonard Fournette had the game I thought he would have rushing and receiving wise. Um, but Mahomes isn't the problem. I mean, he made so many plays just trying to get the ball off, throwing it in receivers' hands and their chest, not able to come up with it. The game planning from Andy Reid. How many coaches do you see call a timeout before the second, or the first half is about to end? That was one of the biggest storylines I've seen, Jake, today going over that game. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, they're, they run the ball. Uh, Tampa Bay runs the ball on their first down. They're making it very clear. They're either going to run that clock out or they're going to, at best, get a field goal. 
All of a sudden, Andy Reid decide, decides, yeah, I'm going to help out the Buccaneers, call a timeout. They can get their play settled up. They can get everything figured out. I mean, that never works. And maybe you can do that against, I don't know, uh, Kirk Cousins. You don't <laughs> want to do that against Tom Brady. I mean, you just gave Tom Brady a fresh clock, a, a reset, a chance to talk to his coaching staff. Just unbelievable. That changes as far as the, the score goes. Um I mean, just so many different plays can really change a game. But the fact is, is Tyreek Hill had, I think it was like 13 yards or something ridiculous, 16 yards at halftime. Travis Kelsey, he was Mr. Reception like usual, but he wasn't he wasn't there when Mahomes needed him the most. And he wasn't really, you can call him impactful, Jake, and we can call him impactful, but he didn't make any game impacting plays. He made stat impacting plays where if you look at his stat sheet, sure, he had a decent game, but he didn't really impact things uh, too much. It was a battle of the line of scrimmage, and it wasn't even close. It was the offensive line versus the defensive line uh, of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I know they had some injuries. I know they had some people not out there for that offensive line for the Chiefs, but we have to remember a lot of those same players weren't out there against the Buffalo Bills and how'd that work out? You know, pretty good. So we can't really blame that. I mean, we have to tip our cap. Gronk gets two touchdowns. Unbelievable. Happy for him. I mean, I wasn't too surprised. I bet on Gronk to get a touchdown. I think you did as well. Yes, uh, sir. Obviously, we know the Brady and Gronk connection. Just crazy. And then, uh, and then the running game. I mean, I'm not trying to just sit here and pat myself on the back because I thought the Chiefs would win. But Fournette, I mean, not just rushing. Also, a little bit of receiving. He was able to come up with big first downs. He was, you know, just great out the gate for that team. One bet that I made, not to make this about betting, was Mahomes more passing yards than Brady. And I understand in garbage time, a lot of times, some you can see, uh, we saw it with the Cowboys a lot when they were down in games. The garbage time, you'll see the, the team losing their quarterback get those passing yards, right? But throughout yeah. the entire game, Mahomes was actually competing with Brady for the passing yards and the score was like third, you know, they were way ahead on the scoreboard. So it goes to show like the distribution was just there uh, for Tom Brady. I'm not saying he didn't have a great game because he did exactly what he had to do. He found his targets, but it, it just, it was an all around team effort, a great coaching effort. And I just think that it was a complete one sided. I mean, it was a head game. This team was the Ch Kansas city chiefs. We're supposed to be the defending uh, champions, right? Tell me that Tampa Bay didn't look like the defending champions out there. You know, they looked like they were in the better headspace. They all, all they had really was Gronk and, and Tom with that crazy amount of experience. So it's just crazy to me to see pretty much the exact same team out there for the Chiefs. And then you see what happens. I mean, there's just, there's a list in front of me right now that we can go down of either mistakes, uh, of things that Kansas City did bad or things that, uh, Tampa Bay did great, but when it comes down to it, I just can't believe I wasn't sitting here on this podcast with you on episode eight saying, how do we go against the GOAT? Yeah, man, I uh, I definitely think that the way we were talking, we, we really wanted to take the Bucks. like the whole the whole time was us, well, what do the Bucks need to do to win? It was just, it was there, it was written in the stars. We, we were trying to talk ourselves into it. We just didn't. Yeah. Need to we like the we Chiefs, just, but we said great things about the Bucks. The whole time we were, we literally, I don't want to say we, we, we called the game, but I feel like a lot of people had this similar opinion. Like, what was the formula to beat the Chiefs? And I think we hit the nail on the head. Everything we said pretty much that needed to happen for the Bucks happened, besides that we thought it would probably be a little bit of a closer game instead of uh, a complete shellacking. But I think everything you said was right, man. The uh, the Buccaneers defense, I think it's kind of cheesy to say, and this has been something a lot of people been, have been saying because you can't really do this, but if you really want to give an MVP for the game, it would just be the entire Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, in my opinion. Yeah. I know I know. Tom had the three TDs. He only had eight incompletions. He only threw 201 yards, but he made the plays he needed to make, and he won the game. So I, I get giving him the MVP, but my MVP was the Buccaneers defense and Todd Bowles. Like, Todd Bowles went out there and put on a clinic against the best offense in the NFL. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Like, every time, like, the Chiefs just kept coming back out on the field, I would just turn to one of the boys and be like, all right, they're going to score here. Like this, yeah. like, they're going to score here. Like they can't keep doing this. Like 
Nobody they, thought it was going to be over, right? No one thought no, this game was just going to be over. Nobody thought that there there wasn't going to be a comeback. Like everybody thought, like at least to some at to some degree, there would have been some sort of comeback. They would have made it close, respectable. But I just I'm a little disappointed in uh, the Chiefs, to be honest. Um, you didn't really touch on it. We're going to touch on it. The Brady and uh, Honey Badger incident. I don't really want to dive into like what was said, what wasn't said. I don't. I don't really care unless you know something was said that comes out but i'm not here to speculate on what their conversation was but to me that like that play when that happened i was like oh shit tom's already in their head like the game's yeah. not even in the second half like tom's already like in there and you never see tom do that usually tom no you don't him. see him do that ever he, he actually only... chased him down man yeah because Honey Badger chased him down the play before, which I think he said, matter. like, you're not going to score a touchdown on me. And then he yeah. scored a touchdown on him. And he's like, you like that? Like, did you see what happened? Yeah. Yeah. But like, my point was, is like, Brady does that to his own teammates to like fire them up. Like, let's get going, boys. Like, let's do this. And to see him like do that and was like, you could see it in his face. He was like, he was jazzed up. He was ready yeah. to go. Like, he was, he was not happy about whatever was going on there. And to me, right then, I was like, oh, shit, like, Tampa Bay is going to be in this game. Like, Tom's not here to play around today. And yeah. then the defense, man, to go back to the defense, I just, to me, my big thing was was the pass rush. And to me, the pass rush was the big story of, of the game. Shaq, uh, Shaq Barrett, one of the most underrated linebackers. Mm -hmm. Levante David, one of the most underrated linebackers. And Devin White, probably the best best maybe i would say up and coming linebacker you know he, he kind of struggles a little bit in coverage but he is an excellent excellent uh linebacker and then we saw what the front four could do of uh jason pierre paul and then vita vey and uh the rest of the gang there so it was it was it was really fun to see tom go out there and do the things they do and the bucks do the things they were doing at home but i was i was a little disappointed in the game to be honest man i uh, i expected a little bit more yeah, it's it's crazy because like you know people uh people always say like in like the betting community people I work with like all the vets right like they're they just kept on saying in all their promo videos and stuff right they're just saying like it's just another game and it's just it's crazy to me because I got that feeling man I felt like I was going out there to play a game myself like no joke yeah. like I felt like I was at like a the Bell Center watching that like I had that feeling of like and you 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 love that feeling man like it's like uh when we were watching like when you know watching conor mcgregor fight like it's just like you get fired up for a, yeah. a rare sporting event like that and like to get that fired up for a result like that like you know i was at a bar for the game and like everybody was just pissed like no matter who they were cheering for they were like fuck man i want to see a close game like yeah and the funny thing is like i was saying with you and like you were saying to your buddies is that like nobody believed it was going to be over so and it's so funny. My dad's the kind of guy. He always says like, yeah, if this team scores the next one, it's over. Yeah. Like he, he always says stuff like that. And then everybody was like, no, no, no. Like they're never out of the game. And he's like, no way. It's out of reach. If like Tampa Bay scores again, it's over. And that was like in the second, that was like in the start of the third quarter. Right. Yeah. And that big Atlanta and new England comeback didn't happen until like late in this. It was like a couple minutes to go in the third. Right. Yeah. Like three. So, I think there were like three minutes left in the third. Yeah. Or something when they came back. But honestly, like to go back to uh, you made a good point about, you know, the offensive line not being there the whole time. And I, I, I definitely do agree with that point. But the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, pass rush is so much more fierce than the Buffalo Bills. Like that was something that me and you kind of touched on that, you know, the Bills have a good defense, but they don't really get after the yeah, key. Yeah. They don't really make those plays. But credit to Tampa Bay is like as a whole organization, like, you know, they went out, they got Tom Brady, they went out, they got Gronkowski, they went out, they got AB, and they just, they, they did the thing, like, you never want to cater to one specific player, but you know the type of player that Tom Brady is and like the ideas he has and the mind he has, like, you need to let him be a little free and let him have some decision making like the Texans weren't really doing with Deshaun Watson. And he like Brady won a Super Bowl with his guys, like the guys he wanted to come with him. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wanted AB. Gronk wasn't coming out of retirement to play with anybody else. Like yeah, he, it's like, cool. He, it's very cool. It's super cool, and I'm pretty sure Gronk was living in Florida at the time, so that was partially one of the reasons that he decided to come out. And we saw 43 year old Tom Brady win his friggin' seventh NFL 
championship. Like it, like I know the game sucked and it, I did say I was disappointed, but like just the storylines that are coming out of it, I think are kind of making up for the, the lack of, of game. Like to me, I said this in the group earlier and I, I don't think this is a hot take anymore. I think this is like stone cold facts that North American team sports, like excluding individual sports tom brady is the best athlete i don't like not athleticism the best athlete encompassing everything that it takes to make an athlete brains ability uh longevity winningness like he Definitely. like I, I think and michael like i love michael michael jordan but like it is incredibly more difficult to win nfl championships than it is to win nba championships like that's just I think most people that watch both sports would say that, that, you know, you can just see from the fact that like Tom Brady has as many championships as a second place team in the NFL does in their history. And yeah. in the, I will say this period, though. Right? I thought this earlier. There's only how many games is it? Once you make the playoffs and the regular season is over, it's at most what four games you have to win. Isn't that what it is? Yeah. But you gotta, that so is that's what deep. it is. This guy, these guys are going through, not one, not two, not three, but four best four to seven series. And this guy makes the playoffs and you win four games, but one you, game. But you could make the argument there, though, that if you lose, if you lose one game in football, you're done. There is no four to seven. Like you can't have an off night in the playoffs. That's why I think it makes yeah, it so much I get spectacular it. because we've seen times where Jordan was down in the playoffs and they've came back and won. Like we've seen times where in like the NHL and the, the NBA and the MLB where teams have had a chance to be down in a series and come back. You can't do that in the NFL. The NFL, if you lose, you're done. If you don't bring your A game, wild card weekend, divisional weekend, conference weekend, and then the Super Bowl, you're not winning. And for me, it's it's more so like like what you think, because I do know a lot of people that really do rate the the four out of seven. They said they always say like the best team usually wins out of that because you have more games to prove it. But I just, I think it's impossible with the fact that NFL in North America is the, I would say the highest collision sport that we have. It's no, obviously of course, demanding. of course. Yeah, of course. So I, I take if you all play that, that game two out of three, Jake, who knows? Like, you know what I mean? Like maybe it's, that's maybe it's two, one, it. maybe it's two, one Tampa, Tampa. No, I get it. I get your point entirely. I do. I get it. Yeah. And they strategically own them, you know? And this is why I just want to say something just to clear the air for anybody that listens to this or just for me and you or for my own headspace. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not a hater. I just, no. I just, no, no. I, I want to make it clear that whenever I, because I guess I'm not always trying to be, I'm not usually that guy that always likes to have an outside take. But I'm also not that guy that loves to just jump on the same take as everybody else, to be honest. And when I look at this game and all these, you know, Brady lovers, they aren't even mentioning the defense. They aren't even mentioning like those penalties that were the, the flags that were thrown. <laughs> some of them shouldn't have happened, but it doesn't matter. That was a um, dominant performance. I'm not getting you know, into it. Those are, no, I know. No, I, I was just going to say I heard uh, I work with a couple guys at work and they're they're big football heads. They're a little bit older than I am. They're in like their 40s and their 50s. Uh, yeah that's all they wanted to talk about was the flags. And I was like, what? Like, no, nah, it's stupid. It's stupid. That's stupid like, because the game wasn't those ball. Two of those balls weren't even catchable. And like, it's, I said in the group chat, it's a vet move by Brady. He knew who to throw it to. He knew it. The, the, the ball he threw was like eight feet away, but it's yeah. a vet move. Cause he knew he was going to get the call. All I wanted to say was, is that Brady, like you said, he's not just the player. He is mentally strong. Like he, yeah, game plan strong like he his relationships are strong like he relates with a b the guy that was like throwing tvs at his ex-girlfriend like this yeah. how can he get on the same level as that guy you know gronk is absolutely crazy he's like thad castle from blue mountain state like he's there's just he has the ability to create relationships with everybody and that's a skill and i think that when you look at this game you have to be able to praise tom brady with what he's done but you have to be able to look at this game and say, great job by the Bucks defense. Great job by Leonard Fournette. And the people that don't have the mental capacity to do that, that's what bothers me. Yeah. Because I'm not being like I'm not a Tom Brady hater. I know how great he is. He's it's just it's obvious. That's why I don't talk about stuff like that. It's just obvious. I don't want to praise this guy. He's a regular human being. 
I want to I want to talk about the guy like Leonard Fournette that's not going to make the headlines today. No, definitely. I I 100% agree and that's something that like I'd say that speaks to more about you as a person that like you know you're trying to uplift the people that aren't really getting that uplift, right? Like you know, like yeah. you're you're on those I don't even want to call them squad guys. I would you're on those like like the the core piece guys, like the guys that they couldn't have won if they weren't there, but they're not going to get the praise if they mm -hmm. do win. So I, I appreciate that Odia too, buddy. It's it's a good trait to have because you know you are right. Like Tom, Tom had a good game, but when you start breaking it down, like they were in a position from early on to insulate Tom to make sure, like you know, when Tom gets up, he usually isn't blowing that lead, and especially yeah. in a Super Bowl, like. That's not really happening. But uh, one crazy stat that we actually uh, we uh, noticed, which I think kind of fueled my comeback theory, but I'm it's happy to see this. The both times that I didn't know this either. Both times that Tom lost to the Giants, he was actually leading going into half, which I didn't know. Hmm. So I knew one, one time. I didn't, I didn't know it was both. Yeah, one of the boys told one of the boys showed me, and I was like, oh fuck, like maybe we're gonna see uh we're gonna see a comeback here. Hmm. But uh, no, the. Uh, the game was dope. I I have a question that's I I feel like it's kind of stupid because they've played before. Throw it on me. Let's hear it. Do you do you think the Chiefs maybe kind of I don't want to put it like we were just saying we don't want to put all the praise on Brady, but do you feel like you know like him going to Tampa Bay and instilling that culture and bringing a culture there? Do you think that might have like kind of got to them? They were like, oh shit, like we're playing Tom Brady in a Super Bowl. Like this guy just wins like that's what he does like do you think that might have been a, a mental factor because we were seeing drop balls we were seeing like mm. shitty play by the chiefs defense like it was just all over they just didn't look prepared and to me i think it might have been the tom brady factor as much as we as we don't <laughs> well, want well, let's look at it like this Jake. they fell down a lot during the year and i'm not saying down by a lot but the chiefs have been down by a touchdown or a field goal or whatever in the first quarter like they statistically we're not a great first quarter or first half team yeah. because they have the talent and Mahomes can throw the ball like 80 yards from his knees. They have the ability to come back in games with, you know, snap of the finger. So to your point, maybe not even just the Brady factor, but just the fact that against Tampa Bay, a team that had great games all year long, but they weren't always a highlight reel team. Right. No. And the fact that like, the Chiefs were down and they sure like they could be comfortable getting back. Like remember when there was the hard, the Hardman um, fumble last week or two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. And yeah, then they yeah. were like, you'll get it back, bro. You'll get it back. And he gets it back, scores a touchdown eventually. Like that didn't happen with them. It was like crappy start, like couldn't get some game flow, you know, smooth drive from Tampa. And then it was like the recovery wasn't there. Like they, you know, I think you and I did touch. We'll have to do some game film. We'll have to watch some of our film from uh, episode eight. But like, I think you and I did touch on the start, you know, the start that both teams are going to have to have. And to your yeah. point, like Brady getting up in the game, like especially with that margin, he wasn't really going to give it up. So pretty crazy. Uh, it's pretty cool, too. Like I saw a bunch of videos, like, you know, how players are putting out like Instagram lives or different yeah. videos. And I was going to ask but, you if you saw yeah. one of these videos, I'm sure you're oh. probably going to bring it up. I don't know if it's the same one. It probably is, but like just like all the boys partying and stuff and Brady's just like at his locker. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah he's just like chilling, yeah. like with his bag. It's like, it's like, it's almost like it was just so expected. Like he woke up that day, just like, yeah, all this stuff's going to happen. And it just, that's just like people talk about experience. Like when you and I are going to be on episode 800 of this, it's going to be like just so different, look different, hopefully sound the same, but it's going to have a different flow a little bit. Like everything comes with experience. Like this guy, yeah. he was able to visualize what was going to happen. So that's just I, pretty cool to me, man. I, I oh love yeah. stuff like that. He when wasn't I even saw, that fired up. Like, you know, <laughs> man, when I saw that, bro, I'm not even going to lie. That like, that really like hit me different. I was like, hey, this guy just won a fucking Super Bowl and, you know, he's literally the only guy sitting down, like literally <laughs> the only guy sitting down. I was like, this dude's just like, like winning's just in his DNA. Like it's, it's, it's nothing new for him. Like you said, it's, it's not, it was expected. Like to me, that just hit me different. I was like, dude, like this guy is a serial winner. Like <laughs> he joins a new team at 43 years old with two guys that 
one guy played for him with him for a game and another guy won two Super Bowls with him. And he's not even up like getting hype with them. Like he's just like getting undressed, like, all right, like we're gonna have some fun tonight, probably, but you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take my time. I'm I'm I'm, I'm old dad Tom. Like Did you watch here. the back of his show today? Yeah, obviously, buddy. I, that's yeah. my guy. I was gonna this was the only episode I like not the only episode, but I made a, a note to myself that I wasn't gonna mention that podcast on this podcast, this episode. So I'm happy I'm happy you did it. But uh <laughs> No, man, that's it. That video is also part of the reason why I think Tom might be the best North American sports, like team sport athlete. And it's a debate that, you know, I'm glad to have with anybody, but it's just at 40, <laughs> anybody old, that wants to get on here with Jake, we'll have you. We'll have you. Yeah. 43 years old, man. Like that, like 43 years old, 43 friggin' years old. This guy won a Super Bowl, man. Like there's the only person that I can think of that was kind of still at the same pinnacle and height and age is is like someone like bernard hopkins or like someone like that like a boxer like more of an individual sport or like mm -hmm. like even i get i can't even really think of anybody else to be honest like i know floyd's up there now in his 40s but he's not really fighting the same competition and he really hasn't been fighting the same competition jordan everybody says you know the lack of competition, you know, uh, I don't like that. But people... to your point about changing teams, that's a huge point. I think. Yeah. And the more you even said it, the more it sits with me. You're like, you know, who cares who was even on that team? You're showing up in a pandemic setting, no fans, like different type of like protocols. You're, you know, handshakes, meeting new people. And all of a sudden you're like telling everybody every week, like we're going to get there. Like apparently he was actually like, texting the team in their group chat every single day oh, like, yeah, over the past, like 10 days saying like dude, when i said gonna be winners when i heard that this guy goes to a team meeting that lasts seven minutes long and brings a notebook i was like <laughs> like what important information can you take from something in seven minutes that you can't just like remember it like you, yeah, you physically yeah. are gonna go and write it down <laughs> yeah. for a seven minute uh devin white was just like it's literally just like a hey like this is what we're doing for the week. All right. See you later. And this guy's still taking notes. Like he's just a winner, man. And it's really cool to see. And I, I, we talked about it with the, um, me giving LeBron a little bit more praise and stuff like that after the Kobe pass. And that's like another thing I used to be, I would call myself, I used to be a Brady hater, but it was easy to hate on new England and all of our friends were new England Patriots fans. Oh, yeah. So well, not, really not Buccaneers fans. Yeah, well, yeah, but yeah, I don't want to get into the bat debate with them. Some of them will, some of them will take that to heart. We know we, uh, we got some boys that love Tom. They wish that they were uh, his kids so he could kiss them on the mouth. On that note, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll finish things up here. Uh, for those of you guys that are ready to get on us about the jersey, we will have a uh, Instagram post up uh, regarding the jersey giveaway, and uh, all the details will be there. But uh, thanks a lot, guys, for the support here. Uh, for the podcast, we'll see you guys for episode 10. Uh, we're getting up there, double digits. For Jake, I'm Andrew. We'll see you guys next time.